Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Christian Bale attacks disgusting Trump supporters who hate people of different opinions. Hollywood actor Christian Bale attacked Americans who voted for and support Trump in an interview about his new movie Hostels. At the same time, he described this group he hates as being hateful towards people of different opinions. This movie is more relevant than ever, in terms of the absolute, disgusting nature of political whims and taking care of the elite rather than the masses, it's just frankly stunning in this day and age that we're having to deal with this said Bale in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. This tax bill, etc., this is not what America was built on. I adore this country, it's my adopted home, I moved here, I left my own country because I love this country so much, my children speak with an American accent. Hopefully we'll come through this for something far better, but we are going through real trial right now, said Bale. The majority of America is shocked at what it has become. They're shocked to see the hatred and division that has occurred within America, that attitudes towards people of different opinions, attitudes towards refugees, it's a genuine tragedy. But we have been here before, we can learn from that, said Bale. Does he not realize that he is demonizing a large portion of the country? We must admit that we are in such dire straits here that we have to forget about our adversarial roles against one another come together and defeat whatever it is that's our problem," said Bale. Judge Janine Pirro exposes shocking truth of what the FBI is doing to Trump supporters. We are finding out more and more how biased the FBI is being in their investigation on President Trump. However Judge Janine just exposed the sad truth. What would you say if I told you your vote doesn't count? She asked that all the effort you put into the issues and candidates is a waste of time, that there are people at the Citadel of Power who believe that it is their right to invalidate your choice if they don't agree with it?" She asked. Folks, this is not about politics. It's much bigger. I doubt in American presidential history there has been as great a crime or as large a stain on our democracy than that committed by a criminal cabal in our FBI and Department of Justice who think they know better than we who our president should be," she said. Members of the FBI and the Department of Justice, some of whom actually ended up on Bob Mueller's team to prosecute Donald J. Trump, did everything they could to exonerate Hillary Clinton for her crimes and incriminate Donald Trump with a non-existent crime. She said. Do you think it's awful how the media and the elites are trying to invalidate the will of the American people? CNN is now promoting a children's book showing Santa Claus as a gay black man. It's disgusting how liberals are determined to disrespect and even destroy our troubled country's traditions and values. It's even sadder that left wing mainstream media outlets are helping them. In a recent segment, CNN helped left-wing author Daniel Kibble Smith plug his new children's book titled Santa's Husband. Said the description of the book, offering a fresh twist on Kris Kringle, a clever yet heartfelt book that tells the story of a black Santa, his white husband, and their life in the North Pole. Everyone knows that Santa Claus is jolly, but in Santa's Husband, this cherished symbol of the holiday season is also black and gay and married to an equally cheery man," said CNN host Christy Paul cheerfully, introducing the segment, There's a new children's book out this Christmas, takes us inside Santa's wedding. We meet Santa's husband David. We're going to talk to the author and illustrator ahead. The author talked about his inspiration for making a book about a black, gay Santa, saying, it was sort of inspired by the annual tradition we have in this country of pretending that there's a giant war on Christmas, and that traditional Christmas is under attack. So, among other things, we were reading all of the news about the Mall of America hiring a black Santa Claus last year. He went on, and me and my now wife made a joke on Twitter that, if we ever had a child, they would only know about black Santa Claus, and if they saw a white Santa Claus at the mall, we would just explain. Well, 
that's his husband. And then Ashley and I knew each other from the internet and from her illustration already, and she jumped into my Twitter mentions and said, boom, new book. Do you think this children's book and how CNN is helping promote it is proof that there's a war on Christmas? Doug Jones' anger stems by getting Trump's back in big way, I think the American people spoke on that. All the liberals who devoted time and energy to get Democratic candidate Doug Jones elected in the Alabama Senate special election may end up coming away disappointed. Centrist Jones is, after all, from conservative Alabama and could end up towing a conservative line if he wants to keep his job in the next election. Jones already demonstrated that he is not just going to go along mindlessly with whatever Democrats want to do. In an interview with CNN's Jake Tapper, he stated that he thinks Democrats should drop their calls for President Trump to resign due to sexual misconduct allegations. Said Doug, you know, Jake, where I am on that right now is that those allegations were made before the election, and so people had an opportunity to judge before that election. He went on. I think we need to move on and not get distracted by those issues. Let's get on with the real issues that are facing people of this country right now, and I don't think that the president ought to resign at this point. We will see how things go. But, certainly, those allegations are not new, and he was elected with those allegations at front and center. When Jake Tapper pressed Jones about Al Franken resigning and claimed that the president had been given a pass, Jones shot back, well, Again, I go back to the fact that those allegations were made, and he was elected President of the United States, and I think the American people spoke on that at this time. There's other things out there, but I think, at this point, we need to move on and try to work with some real issues that are facing the country and not worry about getting at odds with the President any more than we have to. Are you glad Jones surprisingly got Trump's back about this against Democrats' wishes? We have a coup on our hands in America, Jesse Waters calls out what Mueller is doing. A scandal has been escalating recently around special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into President Trump's supposed Russian collusion. Fox News host Jesse Waters went so far as to call what Mueller and his associates have been doing as a coup. On Waters World Jesse and White House counselor Kellyanne Conway discussed how leaked text messages sent by FBI agents proved how Mueller is trying to oust Trump in a truly underhanded, biased way. Commented Waters, the investigation into Donald Trump's campaign has been crooked from the jump. But the scary part is we may now have proof the investigation was weaponized to destroy his presidency for partisan political purposes and to disenfranchise millions of American voters. Now. If that's true, we have a coup on our hands in America. When asked about the credibility of the Mueller probe, Conway replied, The fix was in against Donald Trump from the beginning, and they were pro-Hillary. We understand that people have political views but they are expressing theirs with such animus and such venom towards the now President of the United States they can't possibly be seen as objective or transparent or even handed or fair. Waters then brought up how people are plotting what appears to be some sort of subversion campaign against the president. Answered Kellyanne, it's toxic, it's lethal, and it may be fatal to the continuation of people arguing that that matter is since behind us, he won he's the president, and the Mueller investigation is something separate. Do you think Robert Mueller is attempting a coup? MSNBC's Joy Reid claims that Trump uses media to brainwash people, accidentally says too much. MSNBC's Joy Reid went on a long rant about how President Trump is an authoritarian dictator. She went into the specifics of how Trump could use the media to distort the minds of Americans. However, she started to get a bit too specific. Like, as someone in the media, she has spent way too much time thinking about how the media can be used to brainwash. You know, that Washington Post story said that two of Donald Trump's favorite world leaders are Erdogan of Turkey and Vladimir Putin. It does seem Donald Trump has the tools of authoritarianism down. He that the dance of authoritarianism down to a science, said Reid. Step 1, 
claimed the investigation of you is a fraud being conducted by enemies of the state, she said. Like the media says about Trump's election and Russia. Step 2, get your state-run media, your affinity media to echo that into your base and whip them up into a frenzy against those investigating you, she said. Step 3, get the state party, in this case the Republican Party, to echo that from the seat of government and say, wait a minute, the people investigating the president are themselves criminals, she said. Create this feedback loop that creates a feeding frenzy that has now essentially got Republicans claiming that Bob Mueller, probably the most respected member of law enforcement in the last 30, 40 years in the United States, essentially being characterized as a criminal, and then of course, you have to add that last step. Call for the prosecution of your political enemies in this case, dredging up Hillary Clinton to again call to lock her up. Donald Trump is an authoritarian of the first order, and he's behaving like one, she said. Former CIA director makes shocking confession about what he did for Hillary Clinton. Michael Morrill head of the CIA during the Obama administration made headlines when he decided to endorse Hillary Clinton during the election. However, now he is admitting that he didn't think through the implications of what he did. But I was so deeply concerned about what a Trump presidency might look like from a national security perspective, and believe that there was such a gap between Secretary Clinton and Donald Trump with regard to how well they would protect the country, that I thought it extremely important to come out and say that said Marl. But I don't think I fully thought through the implications, said Marl. So, let's put ourselves here in Donald Trump's shoes. So, what does he see? Right? He sees a former director of CIA and a former director of NSA, Mike Hayden, who I have the greatest respect for, criticizing him and his policies. Right? And he could rightfully have said, huh, what's going on with these intelligence guys? Right? said Marl. And then he sees a former acting director and deputy director of CIA criticizing him and endorsing his opponent. And then he gets his first intelligence briefing, after becoming the Republican nominee, and within 24 to 48 hours, there are leaks out of that that are critical of him and his then national security advisor, Mike Flynn, he said.